How does a section of Earth's crust unleash its stored energy twice within a span of only a few hours? Can two separate ruptures in such close proximity signify that the ground itself is reorganizing? Or is this a rare coincidence within a highly stressed tectonic corridor? When Venezuela shook twice in one day, first with a magnitude 6.2 earthquake at 6.21 in the evening local time, then with a magnitude 6.3 at 11.51 at night, both near Menegrande in Zulia State, scientists were left piecing together a puzzle as old as plate tectonics itself. The ground beneath northern South America is not just restless. It is a tangled frontier of colliding plates, transformed slips and compression zones that rarely reveal their secrets gently. The timing of these events was brutal in its precision. The first rupture struck at 18 hours, 21 minutes and 55 seconds on the evening of September 24, local Venezuelan time, tearing open rock layers nearly 24 kilometers east-northeast of Menegrande at latitude 9.922 degrees north and longitude 70.717 degrees west. Barely five and a half hours later, at 23 hours, 51 minutes and 39 seconds on the same day, another fracture erupted just a few kilometers away at latitude 9.927 degrees north and longitude 70.692 degrees west. To the untrained eye, such figures might seem like sterile coordinates and magnitudes, but beneath them lies a dynamic portrait of a crust pulled in opposing directions by larger forces, where the Caribbean plate and South American plate meet in one of Earth's most complicated geological battlegrounds. Understanding this sequence requires peeling back layers of geological time. The Caribbean plate is hemmed in by four of Earth's heavyweight tectonic players the North American, South American, Nazca, and Cocos plates. This convergence does not form a neat puzzle with clean borders. Instead, it produces zones of chaos, subduction trenches, volcanic arcs, strike-slip faults, and diffuse deformation fields where stresses accumulate until the rocks fracture with violent release. Venezuela, perched along the southern edge of the Caribbean plate, is a crossroads of these colliding motions. Along its northern margin, the South American plate and Caribbean plate grind east-west against each other at a relative rate of roughly 20 millimeters per year. That may sound negligible, but in geological terms it is relentless, pushing faults to their breaking point over decades or centuries. The earthquakes near Menegrande fit squarely into this narrative of lateral grinding and compressive buckling. The region is cut by the Bocono San Sebastian El Pilar fault system, one of the most significant transformed structures in South America. These faults behave like scars running across the continent, where blocks of crust move past each other horizontally in a left lateral strike slip motion. When the strain is unevenly distributed across bends and intersections, sections can jam while others keep moving, building up pressure until brittle failure occurs. The first quake at 7.8 kilometers depth was shallow enough to rupture brittle crustal rock directly, while the second event at 14 kilometers depth suggests that stress had propagated downward into stronger layers of lithosphere. The five and a half hour gap raises deeper questions. Was the second quake an aftershock of the first, or did it represent a triggered rupture along a neighboring fault plane? Normally, aftershocks are smaller than their parent events, yet here the magnitudes were nearly equal, a rare case known as a doublet earthquake. Doublets occur when two nearby fault segments, each critically stressed, rupture in sequence, sometimes sharing stress transfer between them. In the Menegrande case, the 7.8 kilometer rupture likely altered the local stress field, unclamping a deeper section of crust that gave way hours later. In seismological terms, Coulomb stress transfer is often invoked, the shifting of stress from one locked patch of fault to another, effectively priming the next failure. This dual release of energy also highlights the layered structure of the crust beneath Venezuela. Shallow depths in the range of 5 to 15 kilometers are where most destructive crustal earthquakes originate, within the brittle seismogenic zone. Below lies ductile material that deforms plastically rather than fracturing. The fact that both quakes fell within this brittle regime suggests that the regional stress is not confined to a single plane, but distributed across multiple strands of faulting. 
Such distribution makes forecasting more difficult, since one cannot rely on a single master fault to carry the accumulated strain. Instead, networks of fractures may rupture in cascading sequences, much like the pair observed here. The Caribbean-South American plate boundary is notorious for such complex interactions. Unlike the clean subduction seen at the Lesser Antilles Trench, Venezuela's western sector is dominated by strike-slip, faulting intertwined with compressional forces that thicken the crust and raise mountain belts. This combination of lateral shear and head-on collision generates a mosaic of stresses. The broad deformation zone stretching into Colombia transitions from east-west shearing in Venezuela to convergence with the Nazca Plate farther west. Within this transition, shallow to intermediate depth earthquakes regularly occur, though rarely in such tight succession as witnessed in September 2025. The mechanics of these two quakes also underscore the role of fault segmentation. Fault systems are rarely continuous planes. They are broken into strands by bends, steps and terminations. Each segment can accumulate stress independently, sometimes for centuries, until rupture. When one segment breaks, the redistribution of forces can bring neighboring segments closer to failure. In Mene Grande, the 7.8 kilometer rupture may have propagated laterally until reaching a structural barrier, perhaps a fault bend or lithological change, at which point it stopped, leaving adjacent sections critically stressed. Hours later, the 14-kilometer rupture activated that neighboring segment, resulting in the near-equal magnitude second shock. This is not unprecedented in global seismology. Similar doublets have been documented in California, Turkey and the Hindu Kush, where fault complexity allows multiple large events within short intervals. Yet each case challenges assumptions about seismic hazard. Traditional models often assign probabilities to individual faults, but when stress jumps from one segment to another in hours rather than decades, the models struggle to capture reality. For Venezuela, this means seismic risk cannot be measured only by recurrence intervals on major faults. Instead, interconnected fault systems must be evaluated as dynamic networks capable of producing cascading ruptures. The energy released in these two quakes is staggering when translated into physical terms. A magnitude 6.2 earthquake releases energy equivalent to several hundred thousand tons of TNT, while a 6.3 releases slightly more. The combined release in less than six hours amounts to millions of tons of TNT worth of crustal strain, energy that had been silently accumulating for decades. That both events struck within 24 kilometers of each other amplifies their significance. The same small corner of lithosphere disgorged two payloads of pent-up stress in rapid succession, like a double punch from Earth's hidden machinery. Geophysicists also consider the role of fault lubrication in such events. Fluids trapped in poor spaces of the crust can weaken fault planes, lowering the effective friction and enabling rupture at lower stress thresholds. Western Venezuela is known for hydrocarbon-rich basins and fractured crust permeated by fluids. Changes in pressure due to tectonic compression may force fluids into fault zones, effectively priming them for failure. While direct evidence for fluid involvement in the Mene Grande quakes remains to be studied, the possibility aligns with patterns observed in other regions where fluids promote clustered earthquakes. Another dimension is the depth disparity between the two events. The shallower quake would have generated more intense surface shaking, consistent with reported intensities of 8 on the shake map scale. The deeper quake, though less violent at the surface, may have ruptured a larger area at depth distributing stress over a broader segment. Together, they reflect the vertical layering of stress in the lithosphere, where shallow and deeper segments of the same fault system share but do not evenly distribute the burden of plate motion. In the wider Caribbean context, these Venezuelan quakes serve as reminders of the diverse tectonic regimes packed into a relatively small region. To the north, the Puerto Rico Trench swallows oceanic lithosphere in a classic subduction zone. To the east, 
the Lesser Antilles Arc hosts island-building volcanism. To the west, the Cocos Plate dives beneath Central America, spawning deep and intermediate quakes. And in the south, where Venezuela lies, the story is dominated by lateral scraping and diffuse compression. No single model can capture all of these dynamics, yet together they demonstrate the versatility of Earth's crust in accommodating motion, sometimes by bending, sometimes by breaking violently. For seismologists, the key questions after Mene Grande revolve around what comes next. Will stress redistribution trigger more ruptures along the Bocono or San Sebastian faults? Is this pair of quakes a prelude to a larger release or a closing chapter in a local stress cycle? Without precise knowledge of subsurface fault geometry, answers remain elusive. What is certain is that the crust beneath Venezuela continues to accumulate energy from the inexorable push of plates, and that energy must eventually find release. The double shock of September 24, 2025 thus stands as both a case study in fault interaction and a warning of seismic unpredictability. Earth does not always parcel out its energy in isolated bursts. Sometimes it strikes twice in rapid sequence, exploiting the complexity of its fractured shell. In Venezuela, where major population centers lie along the fault zones, the lesson is clear. Seismic hazard cannot be understood by single events alone, but by the networks of faults that intertwine beneath the surface, capable of releasing their power in unexpected back-to-back -back ruptures. If you found this deep dive into Earth's restless mechanics compelling, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to tap that hype icon to help this video reach a wider audience hungry to understand the forces shaping our planet.